actually have a bottle opener on my keychain. No, there you I, go. You guys no I don't need the bottle opener one. I'll open one when it's ready. It's Are we live? I mean, we're being recorded. Thanks for recording. I got a good live. joke. Y'all want to hear it? Yeah, hit it. God and Satan decided one day to see how far a green beret would go without a brain. God said to Satan, I'm going to start off and see if he won't turn into an idiot with a quarter of his brain missing. Can I go live while so, you're in the middle of this? So God took a quarter know, of the green the beret's joking. brain. They were both impressed that the soldier was still trudging on, deep behind enemy territory, quietly singing silver wings upon my chest. So Satan said, let's see where he goes with half a brain. God agreed and took another quarter of the soldier's brain and again were very impressed when the man was still going and singing the Ballad of the Green Berets. So God and Satan both agreed to just take the remainder of his brain. The Green Beret then stood up right and blurred out at the top of his lungs from the halls of Montezuma. <laughs> well, inside marine humor there. All right, we're live. I like it. Are we already live? Uh, look at us go. We have nine viewers. The rolling start is really the way to go, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's casual. Yeah. It's casual show today. It's yeah. casual Thursday. I like the casual. Yeah, casual Thursday. You know, great way to start the weekend. Thirsty Thursday? Thirsty Thursday. If it was still a long time ago and we were still in college. We could like, tonight could start the weekend. Yeah, those days are gone. I saw I saw some, <laughs> some Instagram videos of my friends out drinking on like a Tuesday a few weeks ago. I was just like, what are you? Still? All right, cool. Well, it's All been right, a little bit of a cycle for me because... You know, when you're young, actually, it's not really that much of a cycle for me because I went to military school, so I had no life really at all. But when I was young, you could go out drinking during the week more acceptably, right? You mm -hmm. know, if kids, whatever, maybe you have to go to work a little banged up. But then you get older and you have real responsibilities and it's like, maybe you get to go out on the weekends mm -hmm. at, at best, but you're definitely not going out on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. That's just not how it works. Um, but then as you get a little older, especially if, if your kids get a little older or if you kind of can figure out the babysitting thing, then you kind of go out when you can. Because as your kids get a little older, then the weekends start to be their time, mm -hmm. too. Because then, they're, you know, it's kickball or soccer or Little League, whatever the case may be for them. And so, like, your weekends are pretty much Shop dedicated too. to doing the kiddo stuff, too. And so if you can get, like, a Tuesday after work and just happen to catch one on the upswing. <laughs> nice little happy hour roll that's, through. That's it. it yeah. Like, clock at the latest, then you're good. That's the deal. That's, I think a lot of people now are starting to be, they want to be entrepreneurs just so they can go to happy hours. I think that's the underlying current in the entrepreneurial world right now is people don't really want to start businesses because that is hard. But you know what's fun? Going out and drinking coffee and going to happy hour. That's, that's true. A, that's a good time right there. The gym crew and I, we've, we've figured out semi-recently that on Fridays, instead of trying to rage all, all night Friday, because it just wrecks your whole weekend because then we die on Saturday, don't work out on Saturday. But if we go out right after work, wrap it up at like 9.30 on a Friday, get home, pound some water, wake up next morning, hit the gym. Great way to start the weekend. Yeah, that's one of the many instances where you can use the phrase go ugly early. Mm -hmm. You know, just knock it out. Not a big drinker. What y'all are laughing at. You are one of the only people up here that I legitimately get in trouble with drinking. He's like, the only person in this region that I've seen rolling on the floor of... <laughs> of uh, Hop tinger. Hop tinger. Yeah. Well, I was I've, doing PT much like Blaine was. I think I've only been out with you like four times, and at least two of those times your girlfriend has shown up and been like, what happened to him? He said he was having one beer and coming straight home. Next thing I know, he's texting me saying, come pick me up. Come get me. Yeah. I think she really likes that, though. You should totally do that more often. I think she really enjoys it when you I, do. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> well, hey, so you know what, though? She always shows up. She does. She's she always shows one. up. She always does. Wicked and I'm still we alive. You. you are a good one. Thank goodness. All right, so today we, we thought we would try to talk, if we could kind of get the show to coalesce around at least some central topic, we thought we would try to talk about the kind of the kickoff to event season. And for a lot of you out there, that means Gorek events, there's a lot of cool stuff coming up, so we're gonna talk some about that. Um, but it's really kind of the kickoff to event season or race season or whatever you wanna call it. This is the time of year where you're starting to get, unless you're in New England, you're starting to get a touch of the warm weather, you're starting to feel it a little bit, you're yeah. starting to look at your race calendar or your event calendar, and you're thinking, what, what's on tap for this spring, this summer, this fall, and you're kind of lining that stuff up. So we'll talk a little bit about what we've got on store, um, both here at Go Ruck and personally, and what we're looking forward to. And if you guys have comments, send them in. We'd love to hear what you guys are looking forward to this event season, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll dive into some of that stuff if that's cool. Yeah. Sound good? Yep. All right, so maybe to start, actually, let's just go back a weekend or go back a few days. 
we really sort of kicked off event season in earnest last weekend here at GoRock with kind of our first national well, series, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say that for me, event season is usually the start is kind of the Joe Warner brag heavy. And, yeah. and that's kind of like the kickoff to, okay, that's when it starts picking up. But obviously, it's getting warmer. And so, but as we get closer and closer, yeah, uh, you were up in Atlanta mm-hmm. doing the cadre thing. Yeah, yeah. And so, well, this is the first year we've done. So the other thing about last weekend being kind of the first one we rolled out a series across the country where pe- people all over the country were doing the same event or the same series of events, yeah. right? Which I thought was super cool, by the way, checking it out on social media and looking at, you know, uh, Ragnar and Mickey and those guys down in Tampa, just thrashing people at the beach actually over in St. Pete. Um, so do, they're doing their version of Baton and right. you see, you know, Bellman and those guys doing their version of Baton and then... In New York City, they're doing their version of Baton, and we were in Atlanta doing ours, and it was really cool to see all over the country GRTs doing the same themed event, the same series of event, but with each of the cadre able to put kind of their own unique spin on kind of the guidance and the framework that we laid out here at HQ. And so you saw some things that were similar. You saw like people going on long movements with holding on to kind of the prisoner in front of them, right? Uh, I know... Uh, JC and I took away all their chow. <laughs> they, didn't, they weren't allowed to have chow during the, whole the time. time. No, the whole time. Did you ever get back to them? At the end. Like, but there wasn't ever, oh, if you make this time hack, you can get your food. No. Mm. No. In fact, we would ask them if they wanted chow or rest, and they would always pick rest because we were beating them down pretty bad. And so that's, it was a good lesson to learn is that you don't, you don't need chow as much as you think you do. It might help, but you can make it 12 hours even of really tough stuff without yeah. having to eat. So that was kind of one of the lessons that we wanted to impart was the sleep deprivation, the food deprivation, you know, some of that stuff that really kind of takes people back to their primal self and then have to dig deep a little bit. So we did that, but that was really cool. Um, and then from now on, we're going to have, you know, at least one a month, we're going to have kind of the themed events. You know, Memorial Day is going to come up here in May, just a couple other smaller ones between now and then. But I think that's, I, I didn't realize how, I guess 9-11 last year kind of showed me that, but I really enjoyed watching the same event going on all over the country and just seeing the different interpretations of it and how it was shaken out. It really turns into a history lesson. And yeah. I mean, I did a Moog Mile event a few years back down in Tampa, and it was, I, I didn't really know a whole lot about Moog Mile, and then I came out the other end just, you know, I, have, I just spent 12 hours in like a crash course for this event and what these guys went through and, you know, just some of the stuff that they had to endure. And if nothing else, I have a better grasp on the timeline. and. And just that kind of stuff as opposed to just going, oh, this was just, you know, Black Hawk Down. Yeah. Before, that's kind of how I associated with it. It was like, oh, Black Hawk Down, got it. And now it's like, oh, okay, got it. And I think that's one of the really cool things about our events. It's that it doesn't have to be in the city that it happened or the place it happened. But there are these lessons that we can teach you guys no matter where you are. I think the perspective matters a lot, too. That's one of the, one of the things that I got consistently in feedback from the GRTs when we were out doing the cadre thing is that they really appreciated the perspective that the historical lesson provided for them. So like we took, we took their shoes at one point and made them move barefoot just, you know, just to let them know. And it does two things. It makes them appreciate and honor and respect the heritage of the event and the, you know, the people that survived the time death march and, and those that, that fell along the way, which is super important to us because we want to keep this American heritage and, and pass this stuff forward. But the other thing is it just gives them, uh, it gives them new appreciation for what they can do and what they don't need in right. order to be able to be successful. Like, is it nice to have shoes when you're moving? Sure. Do you need them? Not really. Not, not really in a lot of cases, you know, and so that was, that was kind of cool for me. Dan said one time back in the day, he said, you don't need a whole lot to go on a long walk. And with each go rook event that I've done, if you go back in, I wish I had a picture of everything I brought on my first challenge because there was <laughs> so much just unneeded crap. I had a roll of duct tape. I had a knife. I had, you know, 10 cliff bars. <laughs> it was terrible. Like I totally overthought the whole thing. And with each one, even still, I try and go, okay, do I really need that? And really just pare it down to the weight, the water, the rock. That's right. Weight, water, rock. That's all you need. Yes. Uh, the tall gentleman in the front row. Hi. I just like to say that I am probably the only person who ever pack waterproof matches for a challenge and then have to use them for building a fire. During so Nick Nick is bragging that he packed waterproof matches for a challenge and then had to use them. So all right, that's I, enough. Suppose Nick for today. were you you were a Boy Scout? Yeah, I was. The Eagle was Scout. A, see, there you go. You were you an Eagle Scout, really? Yeah. I yeah. knew that. That's that's a big deal, by the way, being an Eagle Scout, as you as you know better than I do. 
What's the, isn't that one of the Boy Scout models to better to have and not be need than to need and not have to be prepared? I'm a middle Did too. you add let, add let that last always have all the shit that you need to it, or is that part of the official that's, motto that's too? Official motto. Okay, cool. Just checking. Okay, uh, so hey, let's talk a little bit more about that. I, I about what you need to bring to a challenge. There, there's some folks out there that have not done one yet and are signed up for their first one or thinking about it, and there are some folks that have done one or two. I could really see the people that were kind of more senior and, and had more confidence going to the event based on just doing the layout and the gear shakeout mm -hmm. because for one, their stuff was laid out and I could see it and I could just move right through the line like, got your ID, got your quitter cash, there, got your water, got your weight. Like yeah, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, weight, water, ID, cash. That's basically yeah. it, right? And most, especially for the light, that's what they had. There was like a plate, an Algene bottle, Sweet. and a Ziploc bag with 20 bucks and then yeah. their driver's license in it. And it makes life mm -hmm. a lot easier. But they're not carrying any extra stuff. Their life's really easy. And if you're doing that gear shakeout, they're not doing extra push-ups or air squats because... Yeah, you know they didn't. They couldn't get their stuff out fast enough, or pack it up fast enough, or any of that stuff. We have some comments. Hit it. Yeah, there's several people uh, on here that are going to their first events. So Malcolm Landham, looking forward to finally being able to do my first Go Ruck events, doing the nice. lights, June second, August twelfth in Columbus, and then Daniel Apicelli. I'm going to call you Daniel Apple. The Baton <laughs> Death March light was his first, so it was amazing. And then this is either his wife or some, I guess it is. They both have the same last name. Could be Heather, sister. sister. Said, got my rucksack and weight delivered today. I'm excited to start training for my first event in August. Booyah. Nice. See, that's what I like to see is people coming out for those, those first ones. I, uh, we were finishing the class at the Baton Light, and we were getting ready to patch the class. And we had four people there who had done the tough, which I think like 10 or 11 had signed up to do the tough and light. But the tough ended up being really hard, so only four of them showed up, which respect. Um, and so we brought them up to the front of the class and, you know, I want to say a couple of things about those four individuals because I wanted the, the light class to appreciate the beat down they had gotten during the tough because the fact that they even showed up to toe the line for the light was, was saying something. Mm -hmm. But what I also wanted to acknowledge was that those four people, they, they earned their tough patch during the tough, but they didn't feel like the fact they completed the tough had also earned them their light patch. If that makes sense. So they showed up and put out. They showed up and put out during the light, even though I know they were beat down. I mean, I was exhausted and I didn't even do the tough. I was just walking around with them doing the cadre thing. But they showed up and they got back under the log. You know, they were vocal. They were supportive. They did a really nice job during the light. And I wanted to highlight that to the whole class. And so then the next group of folks I wanted to bring up to patch first were the newbies. Yeah. You know, their first event. And so I asked the class, like, how many of you, uh, you know, is this your first event? And and half the class, <laughs> it, was, it was like 30 people. And I was like, oh, oh, never mind. Stay in formation. Let's round of applause for the news people. And uh, we just went through and did it normal because there were that many new people in the class at the Atlanta Baton anyway. So I, I'm loving seeing so many new people coming into the community. It's, it's absolutely awesome to see that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known. And maybe, maybe the class did so well because there were so many new people because they, they weren't overthinking it. They were just fewer chiefs. They were, yeah, they were just listening and doing the work. Fewer and, chiefs. You know, that oh, was man. fun. I've seen some, some like GRTs that have been around for a while just go at each other during events because they, yeah. everyone wants to be a chief, you know? Well, I've seen them go at the new people a little bit too, which is really discouraging I've seen that to me. Too. Like, I like, okay. I remember my first couple of lights being out there, and there were a couple of like more seasoned people that were just. They had figured out there's the best way to do this. And I just remember thinking, like, that, that's fine. But the point of this is not to do everything perfect and never do a push-up. The point of this is to, to learn, do some team building, and get some exercise. And, like, we don't have to do everything perfect. If we don't make our time hack, it's not yeah. going to be the end of the world. And probably the cadre is going to make sure that we screw something up anyway, you know? No, no I, Daniel and Heather are married, and he's a squid. Ah. Go Navy, beat Army. Dan brought two friends for the first events last weekend. John Bauer and Brad Ritter said they did great. Raymond says that beer looks good right now. Come on up here, been. Raymond. Got, Heather, got one to ten waiting on you. There's a lot of people watching today that uh, Alex says I uh, signed up for 9-11 event in New York City. It'll be his first one. Mm. First we got a lot awesome. of new folks today. I think that... Nice. So I remember doing my first event and training for my first event. And people, the idea of running around a city for 12 hours was terrifying to them then a backpack full of bricks was more terrifying and then on top of the bricks it's like oh and there might be a log or some other heavy terrible stuff was like awful you say talk to about our events now and people are like oh that could be fun that so something's changed in the last four five six years when it comes to this type of stuff it's more mainstream if you will it's more 
socially acceptable, but it's not as scary as it used to be. And I think that's awesome because this stuff isn't that hard. You just have to want to be there. Yeah, and to go back to kind of what I was saying about some of the newer events or the newer people at the events is that most people are capable of way more than they give themselves credit for. Right. And so part of it is you got to sign up. You know, we sort of tongue in cheek say the hardest part is signing up, which isn't exactly true, but one hundred percent not. It's true. the most important part in a lot of cases. I would actually that's not true either. The most important part is showing up. Yes, signing up doesn't count for shit. Actually, we're happy to take your money, but signing up actually doesn't count for anything. Showing up is the most important step, and then just putting one foot in front of the other and being able to do it in a team environment. I think is really important. Like we had one individual during the tough last weekend who really wanted to quit a couple times, and it was late in the game too. It was like. Sun was coming up. It was morning time. Like we were within a couple hours of being done, and it was it was tough. But you know, I remember me and JC both going over and saying, "Put your phone away. Yeah. You're not calling Uber right now. You've come too far. You're too close. There's look. You're gonna get there. You got to keep working." And um, they made it, and it was a big emotional release at the end. It was a it was a big deal, and so Did they cry. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There was a lot of crying. There were some great quotes from that one. Like, I normally only cry during heavies. <laughs> that was a good one. Sarah, you know who you are. Um, there was a lot a lot of that. And we didn't mean to really beat them down as, as bad as it ended up, I don't think. We wanted it to be hard. But yeah. at the end of the day, like, the log just doesn't lie. The miles and the weight do the work. And when we didn't have to, JC and I are both pretty mild mannered guys. Like we didn't yeah, really raise like our voice. We just made them work. Getting crushed by like two of the nicest guys I know. It's that's a different level of suck too. Where if a guy's yelling at you, you could actually take some of the anger towards right. him. Some motivation. And, and like, there. All right, but if it's like, hey, I just need you to do it faster. Great. Um, Machines the same way. Frightening when they yell. Just just so we're clear on that. Well, that's the great that thing switch. about not yelling much is because when you yell, you mean it. That's right. Stony Smith, one of our uh, New Zealand GRTs. <laughs> Um, he said, he's new, right? Yeah, he's brand new. He's on a couple new. of lights, I think. 2 That's to 4 a.m., angry people during the challenge and heavy are his favorite. Yeah. And then Randy Palermo, that is a badass dude. I don't know if you know Randy. I don't think I know He's him. on the first coast down south. He's Big He's dude. a badass. No. Big dude. Is he? Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whooped cancer's ass. Oh, that is life. badass. And um, he says the he's same thing, 3 to 4 a.m. When What are ghoulies? Is that ghosts? Ghoulies, ghosts and ghouls. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is sort of the witching hour because most people have stayed up till 2 a.m. because that's when the bars typically let go. And then if you go get Pita Pit afterwards, 3 a.m. Yeah. Right? So most people have been up till 3 a.m. It's usually when, when they're ready for the sun to come up and it's just not showing up yet. Is yeah. usually when, when people get really catty with each other. Yeah, there are some tough... And if you do sort of an out and back, like we did a bit of a loop, but it was still sort of kind of an out and back route with the logs. And the, the tough that Nick and I, that you and I did in St. Augustine, we had the Zodiacs and we went out and back. We went, went to the beach and then we got kind of wet and cold and sandy and chafed. And then we, we knew the boats weren't going to make, they weren't going to like levitate themselves back. You knew the that. Point. You knew that. Nick knew that. A couple other people knew that. But there were rookies there. They're like, we're hope, probably, hope we're just going to leave these somewhere. Yeah. No. We're not. Surfog we're loves not. those boats. That. Yeah. I mean, and Surfog yeah. might have a guy that he could ditch it in his backyard because he always has a guy. But for the most part, you knew those boats were staying with you the whole yeah. time. And it was, I forget exactly, but it was three-ish in the morning. Mm. And you're soaking wet. You got sand all up in your stuff. Your, you know, your feet are obviously soaked. And you know those boats have to go all the way back to where they started. And you were wondering at one point if you could even get them out to where they were at the moment. Yeah. And so you know you've got a long, long way to go. And that's, and people start really getting, getting in a bad way. And I know we stopped the class actually. One of the only times I actually raised my, well, I didn't really raise my voice. But one of the only times I felt like I had to interject with a little bit of energy was to let them know, hey, this is, this is the moment for you guys. You've, I've seen a lot of classes, and this is the moment where this class can decide which way it wants to go. Yeah. You, you either can decide that you're going to finish this thing together, and you're going to work hard and work together and get through, or you can start to just to, to crumble and fall apart. And JC and I will be happy to, to be here and with the logs for, for either, and let, for let it go either, either way. Um, this is, but this know, is up to you. With, this is just some insider talk within the community. There are some cadre a lot of they refer as nicknames like hey these cadre or cadre cake because they're real soft. It would be maybe Hot Mike, Patrick Moultra, <laughs> you and JC are in that. It's known for very easy Jeff skate <laughs> events. Jeff Reeves, yeah. So if you want to do an easy event, look up look up Blaine. 
They're fun and, and Brett. whimsical. Brett yeah. is also known. A lot of people say when they do an event with Brett that they leave smelling of candy because he's <laughs> so oh, yeah. sweet. He gave, well, he gave me pussy or ammonia. Or ammonia. Nice. Or ammonia. Or ammonia. Yeah. Your muscles yeah, burning. His hair looked pretty. He made us do yeah. more eight-count bodybuilders. So that's my experience with Brett. So what's the uh, – okay, so let's, let's keep going down that rabbit hole. You guys have done a lot of events, the two of you more than I've done, what what do you like from the cadre? Like, what kind of events do you enjoy? What kind of cadre? You don't have to name names, but I know you probably will. What, <laughs> what kind of cadre do you, do you really look forward to going to their events? Is it, do you like the, the, the ones that are going to thrash you? Do you like the ones that have bigger personality, like Flash, that have like just bigger personalities? Like, what do you, what do you most enjoy when you're showing up at an event? Or if you're bringing a friend to an event, like maybe let's put it that way. Let's stay on the new person theme. If you're bringing a friend to, a, to an event, it's like going to be their first one. You're like, hey, you got to do this go ruck thing. Who, what kind of cadre are you looking for? My life partner. That's the word I'm choosing today for Chris Smith. My, you know, um, his first event was with Brad, cadre Brad, and I love Brad. He's from Missouri, but he's he's you know down in Louisiana now doing some schooling, so he's officially uh, Louisiana now. But I message him and I'm like, my friend is very passionate about doing flutter kicks. <laughs> And he took care of us during the Blue welcome Falcon, party. Huh? And I had such a great time. But it's the cadre that just interact, the ones that tell, share stories. And, you know, when you hit that low during a challenge where you're just about to sink and, and like, I'm done, and they pull everyone in, they tell you a story that makes you feel like, why am I whining? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the thing that gets me. Lee, what about you? Um, I'm always impressed. Like, I think Surf Hog puts on a really good event, especially if he has all of his toys. Because it wouldn't be a Surf Hog event if there weren't Zodiacs. And you wouldn't be able to talk about Zodiacs if there weren't Zodiacs, right? So there's usually some sort of suck factor with that. Um, man, like I, I just – I've seen all kinds of styles and I can kind of respect each one for what it is. Uh, Machine, like I describe an event with him. It's like he's just cerebral. He's just going to get inside your head and he's going to whisper the instructions to one person. And that caused a whole nother mess of, you know, how do you get that information out? That's SF-101 right there, though. And then there's, yeah. uh, you know, there's the yellers. I'm just going to beat it into you with volume, <coughs> which is fine, too. There's Jeff Reeves at OKC 4th of July event a few years back. Just like 9 a.m., still screaming at the top of his lungs. Never took a break from screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> I was amazed because usually at that point I had been around the block. I would seen a Jeff's few. Jeff's an Air Force cadre, right? I believe he is. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bomber is on fire today for the insiders. <laughs> yeah, what'd you say? Cigars and suspenders, the Jeff Reed special. Yeah, but yeah, he was uh, usually when the sun comes up, the the cadre become a little nicer. Has been my experience. Hey guys, like you know, just hear your movements. They're not going to yell at you. You get to kind of work on it. Nope, Jeff was still screaming. I told him after the event, I was like, I've never had a dude act like an asshole for that long during an event. That was amazing. <laughs> James Hall had an easy first cadre, Lou. That's Lou was my first cadre. Yeah, Put amazing. us through about 15-ish miles. He almost made Nick lose a few toes back in the day. Uh, Jennifer Jarvie, who is from, she's from Iowa, <laughs> <laughs> Ohio. Uh, I love to learn beatdowns with a purpose. That's always cool. Beat and then Patrick McCullough, a uh, 63-year-old dad at his first event in Hawaii for Bull Harbor with cadre Ricky V, and he signed up for five more afterwards. Wow, Ricky V. Nice That's job, cool. buddy. Yeah. Did one event and sign up for five more. You're not going to get Ricky V for all five, probably. So yeah, and Ricky V lives in East San Diego, just so y'all know. Speaking of, this this guy right here behind me, Bo, always puts on a good show. I love Bo. The Bo Show. The um, Bo Show. But, so Bo was the first cadre that I had that really implemented the mission-type situation in which the is, event. Which D Dan Plants, I think, gets official credit for the I'll give Dan the credit the for it, but Bo was the first one general. that I had. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's about we right. We just love Dan. I want to make sure he gets credit for that. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Dan. wasn't trying to take away credit from you. But he was the first one, and he did it with a zombie theme. was kind of Bo's deal back in the day. And uh, it was great because he would sit here and say, uh, you know, you're at point A. you got to get to point B. At point B, you'll meet a contact. And then mm -hmm. uh, he'd run you through. Like, you'd have, like, an interview with the contact. Hey, are you Ben Smith? Yeah, I'm Ben Smith. Oh, you got the package? Okay, cool. And then there was, like, all this and that. And then at the end of it, there was kind of a, well, how would you know Ben Smith was a good guy? And it was like, you know, he tied it all together. It's like meeting ooh, up with the resistance. Ooh, yeah. yeah. So that kind of stuff. It's it's the little takeaways that I find I like more and more from the Girl Rock events, or just the little details, if you will. 
I've got a shout out. Okay. Hit my it. Oldest, shout it. My oldest friend, Jay Christie, is watching, who is a cyclist. What's up, Jay? I miss you, brother. Very self-serving. Um, Adam, his uh, first cadre was Garrett. With me in New Orleans, we did the Ingress event with uh, Cadre Garrett like, and uh, Jason like Garrett? was there. Yeah, Garrett. Garrett. Yeah, it was a it was a lot of fun. Oh, Garrett! Uh, I heard he's pretty easy too. Yeah, Jason is a Garrett very is, easy Cadre. Garrett is the epitome of tough but fair. I think I, I've never felt that he was ever unfair. He like me is not a big drinker. Dude, dude puts on a hell of a show. I think that's yeah. That's a good. I think that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. It was interesting for me uh, being at selection in person for the first time this year and getting a chance to see because we had a lot of a lot of cadre on site for that. So we had yeah. the the wide range from a guy like Garrett who's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's there and was sort of right at the center of it. You know, kind of BD was there, and you get some of the newer guys like Ragnar was there. And it, was, it was his first selection. Mickey was there, who's got a different personality. Um, yeah. Mocha Mike who's got sort of the quiet but turns it on. Then you had Mikey Beavins, Mikey B, who had all the, all the profane quotes on the, uh, on the Facebook Live. To, to Jason, who I had, I had done an event with Jason before, so I had some idea of what it was like, but he's got a whole nother gear for selection. Oh, dude. He's got a real hard on for selection, so. <laughs> he's I was, not a real. There was a part of me that was, during, during the welcome party, that was just sort of like, I mean, I don't think I need to contribute to what's going on right now. Like I am here, I'll hold the phone. I don't think there's much I need to add because between Mikey B and Jason and Mocha Mike and Garrett, I mean, it was, it was unreal. And, but then throughout the course of the two days, you got to see when it got down to one-on-one -on -one or two to one or three to one. And you got to see some of the differences in how these, these cadre interacted with the, with the participants and especially at different phases of the game. Mm -hmm. So that was really good to see. You see like Mickey who, can turn it up and get after it if that's if that's what the situation calls for. But then late at night when you're doing low crawls down some dirt road and it's quiet, then he's got that. I'm just gonna get in your head quietly and yeah. just I'm gonna let you know that you don't have enough in the tank to make this. Yeah. But you don't need to hear it at full volume kind of deal. And uh, for me, that was super cool to see the variety in the cadre and their styles in general, but also how they were able to adapt their style to the situation and and what it needed. Mickey Banks. Mickey Banks. Mickey Banks, who will be at the GRT reunion. He will, he's leading that. He's leading the, mm -hmm. the event, right? I heard that's going to be a fun one. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to be there. So <laughs> It's going to be a rough week. So let, let's, let's rough in, in all the best ways. Let's run that down, actually. So we've got Baton was last weekend. Mm -hmm. Yes. This weekend, we've got the OKC Memorial yep. going on, right? And then next weekend, the weekend of the 19th, 20th, 21st, mm -hmm. is the... GRT reunion. If you you can still get there if you haven't signed up yet, nope. show up. That's going to be a good. Scott Mann said he's going to try to go as you should. Yeah. Austin, GRT Texas. reunion is a good time. If you're a GRT and you never checked one out, it is the most fun you can have with a rock on. I two just came up with that. two that people. Good, right? The most yeah. fun you can have with a rock on. Right. There it is. is that on the T-shirt? It needs to be. Man, that's a good one. Two okay. of the people here, uh, both uh, Nick and Lee, have seen. I crush reunions like I own them. Yeah, that's kind of your thing. Yeah. I watched you cry. Thing. So there's the reunion next weekend, mm -hmm. and then we get into May. The Milers the weekend May. after, or is that that's next right? You the nineteenth, eighteenth, nineteenth. So yeah, so then in a couple weeks it'll be or three weeks, I guess. It will be the fifty miler in DC, the first one. Yeah. That's May eighteen, nineteen, and then the Memorial Day events are the next weekend. So there's a lot, a lot. So you got some kind of one offs at OKC and the reunion at the fifty miler, but then you've got. Memorial Day, which will be nationwide. Yep. That's really because then it's then it's spring for sure. It's almost June. Boom, the whole the whole thing opens up. And then I think it's only another couple weeks. And we've got the new D Day series of events going on this year. Yep. So that's gonna be that's gonna be badass. 9 11, then you blink and it's Veterans Day, and then you blink and it's Christmas again. And that and then it, and then January skips over and you start in April and that's the speed we live. What's up, right. Jada? Goes by quick. <laughs> <laughs> is that Jada Pinkett Smith? It's like you're not even Jada Ryan Bomber's in it. Bomber. Oh, that's fine. He's not involved in our conversation. Leave. He's just involved in the conversation. Look at this community. mislabeled. This should say bomber, but it says missile. That's truly a bomb. I saw missiles at White Sands. Looks nothing like that. It's a I think bomb. that's a missile. It's firing yeah, out of the back. Uh, boy, uh, a bomb just crazy. falls, right? Can you back us up on that? Bombs just. Missiles got like propel. Oh, let me tell my story. Uh, oh, Cinco yeah. de Mayo. There's a lot of people saying that too. 
Oh, oh no kidding. God, we totally forgot. So Cinco de Mayo, we're actually doing, I think, more this year than we ever have in the past. And DC, Cinco de Mayo, there's a light, light, light. Now that's going to be, talk about the most fun you can have with the ruck on. No, that's light. already the reunion. We already, we already said that was a reunion. Oh, did I miss? They can't already be oh, a new okay. thing. So the second most fun you can have with a ruck on, there I think, go. is going to be in DC. The triple light. Cinco de Mayo, Cinco triple mile. light. Like, because that's just, because if you do three lights in a row, that's, that's an accomplishment. Like, I hear that ruins the brand. Lights. Yeah. yeah, right. I've got an answer for the most fun you can have a ruck okay. on with, but I'm not going to say it. But I will say this, you Rich. No, this is better this way. Just Rich, me. my second favorite coasty. There we go, buddy. Sorry. That's it. Where's working. the koozie? We have that koozie here. Sorry, right don't here. worry. Oh, you're using it. Okay. Or oh, he was using it. Boom. Yeah. Was using Fredericksburg. It. We love you guys. Yes. Uh, Thomas, you know, Nick can answer this. Jason said the radio ruck. In what ruck, I'm using your words, Thomas. Ah, Jason said the radio ruckin was. I, I can coming feel this back question. Early April. It's my ETA. understanding the radio ruck should be back at some point next week, probably early next week. Like they took pictures. very early next I week. May or may not have been wearing one earlier this morning. Yeah. So, radio ruck's a good ruck. We were actually talking about uh, kind of where it fits in in the go ruck family and the. The skateboard stickers are great, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Learn how to spell, and right? your face. Hey, actually, was, uh, we had a little debate this morning because I'm still trying to figure out what ruck I'm going to wear for the 50-miler. No. Yeah. Hey, look, if you guys are – whoever's doing the 50-miler, send in your recommendations. I'm, I'm actually completely uh, still on the fence about what ruck I'm going to wear for the 50-miler. Well, I've, got, I've got some thoughts on this. but So one thought is – you have, you have to carry a 20 pound plate, which isn't super heavy. Right. But over 50 miles, anything's going to add up, right? So, right. <laughs> you know, enough, enough, enough friction, enough, you know, it, it's going to be bad. But Zach asked about Woodland. Um, I mean, Tiger Stripe. What is that, the radio? I'm just going to drift it in there. Got it. This is it, huh? Radio that's, rock. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a Same version of it. So, the radio rock, Nick, tell me if I'm. Wrong, because you probably know slightly better than me. It's essentially an echo with a bigger compartment. Yeah, so it sort of so deeper. It's deeper. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so but it's like the the yeah. bones or the structure is the same height as an echo, mm -hmm. but then it's just got a little bit more body to yep. it. Uh, full shoulder straps. Yep. Like full GR1. So the GR1 oh, shoulder straps. Don't hold me to those being the exact ones because no, I think the ones stars prototype. Yeah. But it's it's pretty close. Uh, no frame sheet. <laughs> Deeper main compartment still holds 15 inch MacBook Pro. I really like this uh, rock. So, let me see that guy. Side Molly that the Echo does not have. That's true. So, the Echo does not have the side Molly. It, it so, you could do depth. a hit belt. It just the, so where it lines is, up. This on is you quite a bit weird. thicker, more volume. Are you five foot tall? Better. Then, yeah. then you can use a hip belt. Right? Yeah. Better for sort of a. An, a full like if you if you're gonna do more than just a day ruck and you're actually gonna like go somewhere, no. this gives you enough volume that you could get your jacket, an extra pair of shoes. Like if you were gonna really there. go day hiking, that's probably about what you need, not a bullet ruck. Yeah, for or water like, and everything. Or if you're like a shorter frame uh, and you're gonna do like a two day trip, yeah. this would be awesome too because it actually has enough volume where you could stick like your workout shoes in there, some clothes, some of that stuff, um, and it's still you still get the 15 inch laptop. It's a good ruck. I so. I was debating using this for the 50 miler because, because it is shorter and the weight's going to stay high on your back. I thought maybe that would work, um, just just to keep anything off my lower back. My, what I'm thinking for the 50 miler is any material on my lower back or hips is going to eventually just be death and destruction. Can we call that your salt spot? No, you can't call it that. So moving on. Um, so I was thinking maybe just do that, but then. The other school of thought is maybe I go 25 liter Rucker, 26 liter GR1 um, to actually have it go longer down onto my hips and then be able to use the padded hip belt to keep some of the weight off my shoulders for that long of a movement. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. I would, I, I was, I'll go 20 liter Rucker 2.0, which yeah. keeps the weight really high on the back. If I do that though, I don't think I can go hip belt because it sits up just too a little high. bit too high. I'm not sure the hip belt would be where I want it. Um, so I'm thinking either that or radio ruck, twenty liter radio ruck, uh, or twenty five liter rucker, so the weight might sit a little lower. I'll probably go like pool, pool noodle or something. This thing, oh, uh, opener, because we're I fancy gotcha. today. Yeah, yeah. Do me a uh, and that way I can go padded hip belt to keep some of the weight off my shoulders 
but then you're going to get a little bit more chafage and rubbing. Do you know how to open a beer? Dude, leave me alone. Uh -oh. Randy, it is different from the Rucker Holy because it's shit, like a regular Go Ruck bag. <laughs> and it Deanne Walton is on today. Deanne yeah, is a up? fire captain. She is a badass CrossFit mofo, and her uh, man looks like one of the uh, 300. So Deanne, <laughs> wait, let's back up. So Deanne is a GRT, a yeah. badass CrossFitter, and she's a fire captain. She's a fire. I'll pull up her her uh, Instagram. And. Well, it's not surprising that she's got a man that looks like he's from the 300 because that's. Oh my, she's seems, a badass. That seems yeah. awesome. She's badass. <laughs> um, I would go. I'd probably go Rucker, honestly. Which one? The 2.0? Yeah. I so mean, no hip belt then? You think? If, I don't think the weight's going to be a huge thing now. Time on your back is it's not nothing, right? So it's going to. No, it's going to be like. Of, what are you planning on finishing this thing in? I'm not sure if I even want to go on the record as saying when I think we'll finish. There they are. Um, studs. Man, yeah. Both of them. What is that? That's um, interesting. So I don't know. So where'd you get? I wish Jason were here because I don't want to. I don't want to sign us up for a time. But I. I mean, I think we can do it in 14 hours. It's 20 hours of cutoff, right? 20 hours of the cutoff. Um, I've hours. run 50 miles a few times and, and in like nine hours. Did Nine to train? ten hours. We've had this conversation. I know we have, but <laughs> I trained a lot, but not necessarily oh. for an endurance run. So if you, I feel like if you can run it in nine hours, nine to ten hours, if throw twenty pounds on your back, give yourself hours. another four or five hours. Yeah, right. And I think I think we can do it in fourteen hours. But I don't know. We'll see. I I don't think that's crazy. No. We'll, we'll make it in 50, barring some, I mean, over 50 miles. I think 20 hours happen, is, that's a layup. Like, if you stay focused and you keep moving. and It's a layup. It, hmm. Like, 20. If you're reasonably fit and you've done some rucking, I think 20 hours is absolutely doable. And if that weren't the case, 600 some odd people would not have signed up. I mean, I think most people realize if yeah. you break it up, you take some, you eat. Being able to eat on the move is going to be important. It shouldn't be as hard for rucking. Because you're just not. For running. Yeah, a lot of people when they're running long distance can't eat. And I'll tell you, one of my keys to success at that distance, at like the ultra marathon distance, is being able to take on solid food yeah. while I'm going. That helps me a lot. So but, what um, are you going to bring? I, you're going to be shocked to hear this, but I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really done much I have planning. to know what ruck I'm using first. I don't know. Like, yeah, otherwise, what will fit in? It could be even, anything. I don't even know what ruck I'm going to use yet. Um, I, do, I don't know. So I will bring... Probably some bars of some kind because those are easy. They don't, you know, you can yeah. grab one, eat it. So I'll bring a few nutrition bars of some variety. And then just McDonald's double cheeseburgers along the route, right? Well, if you can get them, I think. Jason and I talked about maybe trying to get a burrito at some point. I'd say pizza, but I don't think I don't think you want pizza on the route at all. I think you can definitely. I think that crush depends on afterwards. The grease but. level of the pizza. I I no joke pizza would make. Over a burrito. Well, McDonald's double cheeseburger or pizza. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mc, McDouble, I would definitely eat one of those during the during the yeah. course. Well, like the nice thing is, since you're rucking 50 miles, you can spring for the double cheeseburger and get that second slice of cheese. I can't do it on principle. <laughs> Why? Well, it's not even cheese. It's like processed <laughs> cheese food. It's not even cheese. Tastes I, like well, cheese. Don't worry about it. It's, it's not really meat either. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Like six hours from then, when you're like 13 hours in, you're like, I want. I'm gonna go. Damn, you know what I used to eat on 50 mile runs were the the little uh, you could get them like in a freezer pack. They're called Uncrustables. They're like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah, you familiar know, with these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, a lot, like if you're under the age of six, you've probably eaten a lot of them. But it's just like a little pita pocket of a peanut yeah. butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, yeah. cut the crust off. They like press it. Yeah, yeah, and they would cut them. They would cut them in half and have them at the rest stops at the JFK oh, 50. That's nice. And I would just crush those things those and m&ms um and then late in the game they would have more salty foods so yeah. i would eat like um they'd have like soup broth way late in the game they would have like boiled potatoes with salt on them like little like <laughs> fingerling potatoes with just, salt just on them. like anything to get in oh yeah because i mean you're running out of gas big time. oh dude yeah and mentally too that's the other thing about eating in the middle of a long event and i would say this is probably true at our, our go ruck events too a lot of times the fuel that the food's providing to your, to your, you know, biologically or physio, you know, to your physiology is secondary to the mental boost you get 
from just having. It's like more of a comfort item than it is a necessity in a lot of cases. I mean, the calories do matter, but a lot of times, like if you if you have a Twix bar, like mile thirty four of a fifty miler, like, You're like that was the best oh, Twix bar the I've morale ever boost had. Is so huge, yeah. I mean, it's it it makes up a lot. I think so. during my forty hours of uh, my HTL a couple years ago. Um, I think I ate seven Snickers bars or something over the over the thing, and then I had double cheeseburgers between the events. Yeah, you might have, you might have been calorie it, neutral it a year, at that a year point. Year and a half ago, maybe. <laughs> two years. Was it two That's, years ago? Wow. I had to so for that for that reason I had to start doing longer events because when I I didn't I didn't really do races or events or much at all when I was first in the army because I was like I, I do PT I train like I lift weights blah 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 yeah and I go to the field you know I don't. I didn't sign up for recreational events. You know, I, I figured if I could get a weekend off, I was not going to be running yeah, or why rucking. Would, why or, would you? Yeah, I had no though. interest in doing any of those things until I went. When I got back from Iraq, I went to the captain's career course and I had, you know, a, a really basic schedule. Like it was super easy. Like you went to school like from like nine to four every day or something like that. And you never had to work on the weekends. It was awesome. And I had a lot of time on my hands and, and free weekends. And the first few weekends we were there in Columbus, Georgia which is actually a pretty good town, we would go out and just get beat up on Friday night and wake up on Saturday like, whoa. Do and it so again. We, we, yeah, <laughs> While yeah. watching college game day. Yeah, I would get up just in time to watch college. <laughs> I, I can't even, my life was totally different back then. Holy cow. Look at you now. It was a different world. Yeah, but I'd get up in time. College game day came out at 10.30 back then. I think it moved to 11 eventually. But all I, all I had to do was like turn on the TV from bed and watch college game day and like maybe have breakfast mm-hmm. or just go straight to lunch. <laughs> or just figure out where Little Caesars was. Video game world. Like you could just you could just respawn back to like full <laughs> strength and like go back again Saturday night. And eventually we decided like we can't keep doing this. We have to do something. So what we would do is we started signing up for like 5Ks on Saturday mornings. To give you some purpose. So we'd have to... a bit of a backstop. So on Friday nights we would go out and be like, hey, we gotta get up at like 6.30 tomorrow morning, go run this 5K. And uh, so, hey, let's cut it off, let's, let's get home. And that was sort of effective. But then what we started doing on the backside was we'd go run a 5K, maybe maybe a 10K on a Saturday morning. Well, big, big Saturday, 10K. Yeah, we'd, we'd go, well, we, you know, we would run reasonably hard, right? Yeah. So we'd go run and, and put in an effort. And then we'd say like, all right, barbecue at my house, because we're all living in the same like little you know, Captain Eight Plex or whatever. Eight Plex. Right, on Fort Benning. And so then it'd be like, hey, we'll have a barbecue at my house at one or at two or whatever. And then we would eat brats and drink beer far in excess of any calories we might have possibly burned. So then it was like, shit, I gotta, I gotta start signing up for longer events because yeah. like the, the balance, then I was like, maybe I should get in triathlon. Like that would be better. Then I could really earn my brats and my beers. It was it You was know what's terrible. great about that? It's like, no matter who you are, no matter what, path you came up like you had that the military so you you were surrounded by all that i was not i was a military brat but like i had very similar stuff growing up when i was like 20 i was like 25 26 i was going through an old family photo album and it was from when my mom and dad first started dating and my dad was in san diego he was an officer in the navy and he was just it was probably good to be an officer in the navy back then oh yeah like i bet it was like just like Pretty girls at the O Club, all that stuff. I'm sure. Yeah. It's... But so, anyways, I'm flipping through and I find this flyer for a party, and it's a it's like a pajama it lingerie like... party, and it's like, hey, this is in your family's this scrapbook. Is, this is like the, it was like folded up in the back, like it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be, but I found it. I was like, yo, if mom and dad feel like they're losing the magic, they just, they just pull out the old scrapbook <laughs> like, hey. and start looking at the flyer. For but that. but no, it was exactly the same thing as what my buddies and I did because we had man, we used to have every I think it was every Monday we had Margarita Monday. In college, the, the B Yang. B Yang. We were talking about, in case anyone missed, it, we were talking about ruck off. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. I've done some ruck offs with B. And What's me, a I'm, ruck off? A ruck off is a pre meeting before you do your go ruck challenge. So before the challenge starts, before. you meet up and. Would you say that it's also the post meeting? The post meeting. So, so a ruck off counts if it's immediately following an event. Yes, both. Okay. Both. Okay. So now beforehand, my uh, rule is <laughs> beer only. That's your okay. Before you're only, before you're only allowed to drink. Or does it mean beer is beer the only, only kind of alcohol? Yeah, well, no. Like he, he does it in or, shots or, that are looking for a little liquid courage, and usually those are the ones during the welcome party that are hurting the most. I think, I think if I would rather do one like one shot of Fireball whiskey before a challenge than drink a beer or certainly two beers, because then you've got less in your stomach. It's less volume. Yeah, but I mean more no. calories, so you'll use it. 
No, no, he's not going to use it. It's empty calories. Really? Right, anyway, so shot in a beer is same calories. Listen, you guys tell us what what's your technique for a rock off. My technique is to drink water and stretch. <laughs> I've not done either one of those. I'm, I'm, I'm weak. I'm, I'm, yeah, I guess I'm a responsible adult. I'm a, I'm just weak. I guess. So I my it was my second event ever. I was driving down to Houston from Oklahoma. It's about an eight hour drive. Pulled in town. Uh, a couple hours before the event, we had dinner at uh, Trist, Tristan Dodd, I think is his name. Uh, had it at his house. Uh, it was awesome spaghetti and stuff. And then we went to a bar near the start point right beforehand. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there with Willie Vera, a bunch of other Houston Never GRTs. don't know him. Ne- <laughs> Who is she? Uh, we'll see her soon in Austin. Yeah. But so we're sitting there, and I'm sitting on a stool by the front door, and we're drinking beers, and this guy comes and he hands me his ID. Like, I'm right by the front door on a stool, and so this dude just walks in and hands me his ID, so I grab his ID. So, I, you're good, come on I in. I do that, I'm like, all right. I'm like, yeah, you're good, here you go, man. And they just looked at me like, what are you thinking? I was like, you're right, I should have charged him a cover, you know? That's so, fun. that was a fun rock off. Right after that, Lyle showed up, and he, he said... He, Lyle's is an easy cadre. He's retired, but easy. Yeah, he, he was uh, the no-shoes. I like how you're, he, you're saying that about the retired cadre. Yeah, right, he shows up again. Smoke you. Today. That's the hardest dude, light I've ever done dude, in my life. He doesn't mess around, and he, he like he he plans it out. Lyle's like he was horrific. Easter eggs things all over the city. One time yeah. we were on a break, and he's like, "What's that over there?" And I look over there, it's a huge slosh pipe and a couple I, more ammo cans. I, I shadowed an event that he was cadre there. at in uh, College Station, and he took my shoes as a shadow. <laughs> Yeah, and wouldn't give them back. He gave them back their shoe privilege, but kept my shoes for a long till I finally was like, man, yeah, I need my shoes. Hurt. <laughs> Can I have my shoes back? Um, okay, so your favorite rock off. So you did the Houston one. Houston was a fun one. Uh, and then there was one after some OKC events that it was after, obviously. Uh, but we ended up, we finished at like 9, 10 a.m. and we drank till 3 a.m., yeah, it yeah. was it was weird. Like I no sleep, just no straight. sleep. Just kept going, just kept going. So you finished? Finished. The I think there was like ran home, showered, and then we all went over to oh one God. of the GRT's houses, and it was just like good old fashioned like house oh, party. Yeah, like a house party, and yeah. people like came and went, and oh, how are you guys still awake? We're like, we don't know, but give me another beer. It was great. It was so much fun. I've got two favorites: the uh, Lee Harvey's in Dallas. Yeah, which is. Absolutely, the best dive bar in the whole United States. There's That's a bar in Dallas, Dallas called Lee Harvey's. Lee Harvey's right? used I don't to be love a that. house. Now, as, hey, as a JFK so fan, many I don't scavengers, love that. so many. It's yeah, it's absolutely. They have Pearl, they have Lone Star, they have tacos. It's it's absolutely amazing. I still have. Friendly. I was doing a sounds good a t-shirt purge, and I still have my Dallas Your class Dallas shirt from back yeah. in the day. I Did can't, you keep that one or? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I keep them, and I just, that one, I I don't think I've ever really worn it, worn it. It's like a weird, thick material, yeah, yeah. but I, I love it. I can't get rid of it. That that, that was a fun class. That so, was the first class I did with my brother. My nice. second one is back in Shreveport last year, the Extortion 17, and this is with Cody and Brett. Yeah. And it was the uh, Extortion 17, which was absolutely amazing, but being able to go to like my my favorite brewery back home with all Great the Raft. GRTs there, Great That's Raft. Awesome. That was it's in middle to me. Yeah. It's kind of cool when you can show people around your town. Like, yes. I find, like, the town I grew up in is, it's okay. Like, <laughs> objectively, it's okay. You know what I mean? But it's the town I grew up in, so I've got a lot of love for it, and I care about it. For sure. Um, my folks still live there, so, like, I go back regularly, and some of my friends from high school and people have, have found their way back, and that's, it's awesome. To me, it's it's a great place, and it was a great place to grow up. It's a, it's a cool little town, but, you know, it's... It's a small little suburban town in southwest Florida. It's not even near a major city. It's two hours south of Tampa, yeah. and that's the, the closest big city. Um, but, I, but I find when I have friends that come down and visit or like when Jenny and I go down there and we're driving around town, I'm always like, oh, that's where I went to high school. Oh, that's where we used to do this. Or, oh, that, this road wasn't even here when I was, you know. And I can't even help myself. And I can hear myself talking, and I'm like, why, why am I being this guy? Yeah, like <laughs> I know that she does not want to hear this stuff. Yeah. Like, and, you know, she's sweet, so she's like, oh, yeah, sounds great. Thanks, and and awesome. to be fair, she does the same thing in Litchfield, Maine, when we're there, which is, like, a similar type of town, right? Like, it's great. We love it. The family's there. But, I mean, objectively, it's like... Right. I mean, know, I just took Allison, my girlfriend. I get to do the my wife thing that you guys do 
but I did it. Allison, we miss you. Come back. I think I, think I like you, Allison, more than, more than Lee. Lee. <laughs> Lee misses you too, don't No, me. she makes don't. me say it every night when we talk. You got anything to say? I miss you. Okay, <laughs> good. Like, damn it. We all play the game. I know we do. Uh, but when I took her to OKC, and even when I took Nick to OKC, I was doing the same thing. And it's, it's awesome. I love it. Yeah. I love it, though, for me, because people automatically just write OKC, Edmund, all that off. Well, to your defense, yeah. OKC objectively is actually a good city. Mm-hmm. OKC is a lot like Salt Lake City. I mean, I'm not saying they're similar. But they're similar in the sense that I think a lot of people go there with low expectations. Or they think, oh, there. it's it's whatever. But there's there's a lot of cool stuff to do in OKC. Salt Lake City's got way more cool stuff to do than I think most people would imagine. I'm sure there are, whatever you guys think, let me know. Birmingham is that way? Yeah. The first month of Birmingham, like... Uh, you misspelled Allison's name. Damn it. Nice uh-huh. 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 Still pan. Kendra Mills has joined us. Like Kendra Mills. Hey. hey what Kendra? a... Oh, speaking of HQ people, very special happy birthday shout out to Bianca. It is just 30. Big 30. Big, Bianca. Big, happy big 30 to Bianca. My God. HTL finisher. HTL, HTL finisher. finisher. And photo model for photo, all things badass. Uh, yeah. I don't want to talk about that. Mm. Bomber's upset he doesn't have a big picture of him here yet. Well, I was very disappointed when, like, when I got here, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was having the all women's HL change the Mama Stump. Right. Y'all understand that. Mama Stump. The second thing I asked Jason was I wanted a ruck called the Bomber Ruck, and then he had to explain to me why that wasn't a really good idea. You didn't get a ruck named after you? No. That's bad. Kit, Kit, Kit has a whole, whole line of bad. Bad. Ruck is bad. Face on it? Exactly. Kit, like, Kit has a whole line of bags. He has all a whole, the Kit three, bags. Three different three bags. bags named after Kit. Mm-hmm. Not a bomber, nothing. Not a bomber, nothing. <laughs> oh. It hurts my heart. It's just I've never heard that. So I so I had a I had a quasi sort of accidental ruck off this past weekend uh, in Atlanta because I met up with my buddy Garrett Cathcart. Garrett, who may or may not be watching, he's the regional director for the Southeast region of Team RWB, and uh, all around great dude. If if there's anything going on in the city of Atlanta that involves veterans, like he's the guy. Did he point. do the event? No, <laughs> no. But in his defense, he had something to do that night, which was go to the symphony, the Atlanta Symphony, with one of RWB's big funders and, and his right. wife and whatever. So you so get out of it. That's cool. I tell you what, that guy has carved out a socialite. Not on purpose, not in order to be fancy. He lives in a, in a, in a, I'm sorry, Garrett, I'm telling these stories on you. I'm sure you're okay with it. He lives in a studio apartment in a place that used to, in a lofts place that used to be an old high school. It's badass. It's in little five points in Atlanta, right off okay. the cut line in an awesome, awesome neighborhood. And it literally looks and feels like an old high school. Like the hallways still have the lockers. Uh, oh, wow. There's still like an auditorium. Can they use them? I, th- I don't think so. No. But it's like his his loft apartment, his studio is, is literally an old math classroom, and you can kind of tell. It's anyway. But That's kind of cool, though. But for a guy working at a nonprofit, living in a in a in a studio, he has carved out through his own effort a really and a little bit through working for Team RWB, which gets you a little bit of credibility. He has carved out a really awesome uh, existence for himself in the city of Atlanta, and is doing a lot of awesome stuff. He's on the board of Atlanta, and he's doing a lot of other things. But anyway. Uh, I text him the morning I'm flying out. No, the night before at like 11. I was like, oh, hey, by the way, I'm flying into Atlanta tomorrow. I get in at like 10 in the morning. My event starts at 9. I have a 6.30 dinner. Do you want to do, do something? And he's like, I'll pick you up at the airport. Perfect. So like, these, are, these are good friends to have, by the yeah, way, right? right? I'll pick you up at the airport. So he picks me up at the airport, and we go to try to have some like breakfast brunch. And the place we want to go to, this little diner, is like jam-packed full of people on a Friday. So you know it's good. Diner. And we're like, yeah. So we have to, we bail and we go to the Porter in Little Five Points, which is amazing. Best beer in in, in, uh, in Atlanta. And we have awesome food, have a beer or two. And then he's like, let's just go for a walk. It was like 70 degrees, sunny. It was Friday, Masters weekend. So in oh, Atlanta, perfect. like people are feeling it, you know. And so we go for a walk on the Beltline. If you're not familiar with it, it's just awesome kind of urban space in Atlanta. We go for a walk on the Beltline, we walk past this place that's got kind of a beer garden, and there's just people everywhere. And it's like 1 p.m. on a Friday. Right. And you, you look at this beer garden, and you're like, none of these people are going back to work. Today. Nope. They're like, all, no, they're all no done. chance, right? They're all done. So we're just like, we should go here. And they this all is, work together, by the way. Like, they all, they're all come from the same This office. is where we should be. 
So the beach is a little this way too. Sometimes if you go for lunch on a Friday at the beach, you go to the pier somewhere, like you look around and you're like, hmm, at least half these people are not going back to work today. So we go to this place, it's called Lady Bird. We go to this place, grab a couple beers. We're sitting in the beer garden in the sun and put our feet up. We're having an awesome time. Next that drain sounds real hard, man. It's a, oh, it's a hard it's, it's a big weekend for you. Yeah. Next thing you know, like I'm having to get a water every time I order a beer because I'm like, I have stuff to do. Like I'm not going to go to bed tonight. I love. I got to be on my game. I love your I'm going to cut my alcohol with water method because when you That's get on it. That's a good technique. It's a good technique, but okay, like don't you, not- you follow it very strictly. <laughs> one to one. I didn't dude. even realize it. Yeah. I mean, this is not rocket science, people. <sighs> good times. Oh, I got a cool one. What? Patrick. Is that Katan? Sure. Katan. Katan. Katan, like a sword. I'm going to let Blaine answer this. Any plans on adding a female cadre? Ooh. So it's a good question, and it's a totally fair question. Um, and it depends on what angle you want to take on the answer. So the short and most uh, candid answer is there are no current plans or anything in the works to have a female cadre. Like we haven't, we haven't had any apply. We're not interviewing any. There's, we're not like, there's no proactive campaign to recruit. So I guess the short and simple answer is there's not an active plan to add a female cadre. Um, I think that it's something that we should consider. And like, we probably are considering because all of our cadre have to be veterans of special operations. And so, and we, and we take that very seriously. So by the way, there are no dudes who are cadre at GORUCK who are not veterans of special operations. Um, so it's not as much a gender thing as it is part, of our, part of our box. brand, part of our experience is, and a standard we hold ourselves to is that the cadre at our events are veterans of special operations. And like, if you look at, if you actually go online and apply for the position, it, it lays it out in a little bit more detail, like you have to have completed these courses and or been in these units. So there's a little bit more granular detail of exactly what that means. Um, but that is the only criteria. No. So it's not you have to be a man and be a veteran of special operations. You have to be a special ops veteran, um, you know, MARSOC, SEAL, yeah. uh, CCT or Green Beret kind of thing. Um, but the way that the mil- I, I just saw today, twelve women have now graduated the Ranger course. Yeah, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I'm, I'm, and female Marines that have gone through the. There, there have been some women that have graduated yeah. the uh, the infantry. There's uh, some hard basic schools out there in the Marine Corps, which is not special operations. Although most Marines would like to think it is, it's not. Um, you actually have to go into, into Marine Special Operations to do that. Um, but there, there's going to be a day, and it won't be that long from now, likely where there will be women who are veterans of special operations. And at that point, there's absolutely no reason why they should not sign up and be go ruck cadre. I mean, and I, I suppose the criteria to be cadre could change at some point. I, I don't see it happening anytime real mm-hmm. soon, but um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on with women in combat right now. There is, I believe there are female leaders in every combat arms battalion in the army right now i think i read that today i'm pretty sure that's the case so every artillery infantry and armor battalion down all the way down to the battalion level it's not like one like token female per division or brigade combat team i'm i'm pretty sure um that there are women leading combat arms units in every battalion in the army right now which is crazy to think because a couple oh, of years yeah. ago it wasn't even happening so tons of great stuff going on and great women out there doing amazing things and leading in combat roles, which A, I think is awesome. B, I will tell you that this is not a new thing. And so even though there were not women serving as tank platoon leaders or infantry platoon leaders uh, 10 years ago, I served, I served in Iraq, in, in Baghdad, in Fallujah, in that area in 2004. So we're talking 14 years ago, mm-hmm. right? I was in Baghdad. There were women at that time that were MPs, oh, yeah. that were engineers, that were civil affairs, psyops, you name it, transportation even, that were platoon leaders, squad leaders, team leaders in units that were absolutely on the front lines of the battlefield. So this idea that it's a new concept that women could serve on the front lines or in combat units, it's it's great that it's happening officially and that some of these new opportunities are opening up. I, I, I completely agree with that. 
but the idea that it's this sort of new thing is not true. There, there were women serving in direct combat roles, you know, a decade and a half ago, maybe more, yeah. maybe going back to 2001. I mean, I, and that dates, that only is my experience. It, maybe it predates that even. So I, that's a long way of saying <laughs> there, there's no active recruitment strategy in place, but. <laughs> that is a very long way. Like, I think my vibe is, I've been here enough that it's like, if a person, male or female, or if a woman applied to be a cadre and checked the special operations box, then there's no reason we wouldn't entertain the idea of bringing her on. No, hell no. And so, look, here's the other thing I would say. There's been a lot of talk about, let's take ranger school as just one example. That's just like one microcosm. I have had that experience. I'm somewhat familiar with it. I know a couple of the women that have gone to ranger school. So, like, I'm reasonably familiar. So, we'll just use that because I, I actually have some experience there. The idea, first of all, the idea that those women did not meet the standard to graduate ranger school is a farce. Because I know some of the people that were ranger instructors during that time, and I know a couple of those women, and I know for certain that they were great soldiers, absolutely physically and mentally, and sort of from a leadership perspective, capable of graduating, and they earned every stitch of that ranger tab. So I'll be happy to be on the record as saying that. I know for a fact. So that's that. So if, if Women graduating from ranger school somehow threatens your masculinity as a guy that graduated ranger school. You, your shit's all messed up. Or a guy you, that didn't graduate ranger school. Or a guy that did not graduate ranger school and has all mm. kinds of reasons. Because they, they say there's two kinds of officers, right? There's those with the ranger tab and there's those with an excuse. <laughs> so whether you whatever category you fall in, take it easy. Like Lisa Jaster or Shea Haver graduating from ranger school in no way diminishes the accomplishment that you have of graduating ranger school. Which, by the way, it's a solid accomplishment, but like 300 people a month graduate ranger school, so let's not pretend like it's being an Olympic hurdler or something. It's, <laughs> it's hard, but it's okay, right? So there's that. Um, but, and I almost, almost forgot where I was going there, but here, here's what I would say about the whole thing in general, is that as much as we care and there's all this discussion about, well, if women are going to serve in these roles or go to these courses, then the biggest thing is they have to maintain the standard. The standard has to be upheld regardless of the gender of the person going through. I completely agree with that. But let's not lose sight of the fact I want men who are going to serve in combat leadership roles to also adhere to the standard. And that's a real issue that we need to address too that no one's talking about. In my opinion is like, look, if you're an armor officer or a field artillery officer or an infantry officer like, and you're a dude, you have to meet the standard. So before we start throwing stones and, and like losing our mind about how we need to make sure that the women are meeting the standard. How about we make sure all the guys are also meeting the standard? Because there's a plenty of, and I, I don't mind saying it, there are plenty of out of shape, fat, not capable um, field artillery, infantry, armor officers out there that need to get their shit together before they start worrying about whether or not some of these women can meet the standard. So do I care that women meet the standard to be in any of these roles or go to these courses? Yes, but that's only because I care that everybody meets the standard to serve in these leadership roles or go to these courses. And so that's, that's as plainly as I can put it. So, Next question. Uh, real real we, quick. We got time for a, a quick one a few, or two. few female ATX contracts and one of the first ones to be given out was to a GRQ woman. From Travel Squad. So yes. one of the first. I'm not going to say her ready. name, but she's a badass. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what, what we're alluding to here is that there's a program called 18 X-ray program where you can come off the street, get recruited into the army, and go through a pretty rigorous pipeline of training in, in order to go kind of straight into special forces. Yeah. And the idea of straight in is a bit of a misnomer because, and, and Jason did it, so he can tell you more about it. Yeah. It's a long process. You're not going straight in, but you don't have to go serve in the army in, the, in a conventional unit before you're allowed to get into that stuff. You have to go through a, a very rigorous and long training pipeline. And one of the first 18 x-ray contracts offered to a female was to a GRT. Yeah. She's a badass. badass. Yeah. Which makes makes perfect sense to me. We've got a lot of badass GRT females. Oh man, dude, yeah. there's a yeah. way too many to list. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead, Mr. Burgess. Oh, so yeah. So last thing, and we'll wrap it up here. So this um, this individual here, if you can see him, this is Staff Sergeant Brian Burgess, um, and he was killed in action in 2011. So some time ago, and his father came up in medicine, joined us at the Batama Memorial Death March at our booth in, uh, in White Sands, New Mexico. And he told us a little bit about Brian's story. And, you know, as a Gold Star father, uh, understandably, one of his big missions is to make sure that his son's story stays alive. And I'll tell you, I know uh, a lot of Gold Star families. Um, 
I have a lot of close friends that have actually, you know, been KIA. So I understand this very deeply. One of the most important things for all these folks is that the story of their loved one doesn't die, that it doesn't fade, that they're able to continue on. And so the great things that these men, men and women have done uh, doesn't, doesn't die with them, but it carries on and their legacy and their memory um, continues to go kind of throughout time. So one of the things that Mr. Burgess is doing is he has these, these photos of his son, Brian, and he also has these really awesome coins um, here that say, never forget. And they've got kind of the, uh, it's very hard to see here, but I'll do my best. There anyway. it is. So he actually gave us a number of these coins and these photos, uh, enough so that we are able, and Bomber did this today, in fact, mm -hmm. mailed them out to a large number of our cadre out in the field all over the country. And so coming up for our Memorial Day events, there you go. so coming up for our Memorial Day events, um, uh, most of your cadre across the country are going to have one of these photos and they're going to have one of these coins and we'll honor a lot of people during the Memorial Day events, but um, they will have these on them and we'll give them out at the end of the event to a GRT that displays or a participant that displays, you know, a particularly high level of motivation, intestinal fortitude, grit, you know, it will be at the cadre's discretion, but sort of the spirit of the event award. Um, so they'll be able to recognize a participant that does a particularly great job during the event, and they'll be able to get uh, Brian's picture and this coin as something that they can take home to kind of commemorate their effort and their experience at the Memorial Day event and to keep uh, Brian Burgess's memory uh, alive and well. So. We're very happy to do it for Mr. Burgess. We're very happy to do it for Brian. The cadre I know are for excited sure. to do it. So if you're going to be at one of our Memorial Day events, you know, be on the lookout for this. Um, you won't need too many reminders, I'm sure, that um, you're there to honor honor the fallen. But uh, just one small little thing we can do as Go Ruck that we're very happy to do um, just to keep one fallen soldier's memory alive. So stoked to do it. That's badass. All right. So with that, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up. You Get signed up good. for an event this spring. This event yeah. season, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff going on. I look forward to seeing you guys out there. We got a tough in June. Char 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 Charleston? Charleston? Charleston. Charles Charlotte. 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 Charlotton. Charlotton. Charlotte. There's a Charlottesville. There's a Charleston. There's Somewhere a in the southeast CH U.S. And, Lee yeah. will be doing a tough. North or South Carolina, <coughs> I will be there this summer. It'll be awesome. If you can figure out what city it's in. Uh, just show up in any city. That's Rob, all do, Boston, right? Texas. Boston, Texas. Boston, Texas. Austin, Massachusetts. All right. Boston. See you guys.